Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking this card that I made. I liked it, but something was just off and it wasn't what I wanted. So we're gonna make a second version, shifting everything down and adding a second row of candy canes. And we're gonna end up with a card that I'm absolutely in love with. So I really wanted to share this with you. I had filmed that whole first card and was fighting with myself whether I should just post it and it was good enough and like just move on. Um, but I decided to kind of share the edit here and share how not everything comes out perfect all the time and different ways that you can kind of self-edit and evaluate your own designs and see what you can shift around to improve next time. And improve doesn't mean like so that everyone loves it. it I really just mean self-editing here so that it's a project that you're in love with. So I'm starting out with the Sweet Sticks dies from My Favorite Things, and I love that the base layer has those indented lines so you know exactly how to line up the candy cane stripes. This was super easy. I cut the red out of a My Favorite Things um, cherry red cardstock, and we're going to use a coordinating ink later um, to stamp our sentiment, so I really love when everything like matches like the tone of things match and I love that my favorite things has the cardstock the pattern paper and the inks that all coordinate together so I'm just doing a couple little stripes of glue at a time and then using my embellishment wand to place my stripes in place and once I had all four ready to go I'm taking this what is this called I have it right here frosted lace stickles which is the most beautiful frosty glittery speckly like glitter glue I've ever used um, and I'm gonna run that along all of the edges and then at the top I'm kind of making like little M's almost like swooping and curving the um, stickles down so that I get kind of an icicle frosty look right at the top over that curve um, and we're going to bring this element in somewhere else as well at the end, well towards the end, but we'll get there in a minute. So for this backdrop, I'm taking snow cone cardstock from MFT and I'm just taking a tiny bit of my dot runner and adding that to the back to hold it in place because we're going to go in with the brush splatter um, background stamp and that needs to be like away from all of the edges to stamp really well. So I treated my cardstock with Pink and Main's Anti-Static Magic Powder Brush and I'm going to use my Pink and Main ink as well, embossing ink, and I'm going to stamp this twice because these dots are really tiny and I wanted to make sure I got a really nice impression. And then I'm going in with this winter green embossing powder, which is the perfect match to this snow cone cardstock. It's literally like they were made to be together, even though they're from two different companies. So I love this one. It's so beautiful and the glitter is beautiful. Um, I just am tapping off the excess from my printer paper and then I'm going to go in with my heat gun and start melting all of this splatter into place just kind of taking my time working across the card we are also going to end up trimming this down a little bit but i because this splatter is so irregular i wanted to make sure that i had the full stamps worth to work with when i was picking out what's going to fall inside our die speaking of i'm bringing in the a2 stitched stacks dies and we're going with the second biggest one um, my cutting plates need to be changed so badly and so to keep the, my paper clean <laughs> I am kind of placing everything in a printer paper envelope almost just folding it in half tucking everything in and I also use one of the smaller dies from that die set to cut a piece of the Copic Express It paper that I'm going to be stamping on shortly that's gonna be where our sentiment goes. So now I have a tiny rectangle, I have my A2 inner panel. I'm adding foam to that panel and popping that right into place on the center of my card base. 
Now for that tiny rectangle, this is where I'm bringing in that same cherry ink from before. I store all of my mini ink pads in these like beading boxes and I cannot recommend it enough. I love it. I've been storing them that way for a couple years and they're amazing that way. It keeps everything in one place and I have everything in rainbow order and I know exactly where to go to find my inks. So we're going to stamp the Sending Candy Cane Kisses stamp from the Sweet Sweetest Holiday Wishes sentiment set from MFT. And then this mousse is from a new stamp set out from them called Merry Moose. I am lucky enough to be a guest designer for them this month on their weekly sketch challenges and their like bi-weekly or monthly color challenges. So um, they did give me this stamp set to work with, but making this video was not part of the deal. Um, I just love this stamp set so much. I wanted to share it with you guys here instead of just posting pictures on my Instagram. So um, if you haven't done a sketch challenge before, this card has nothing to do with the sketch um, that's up right now. But every week, My Favorite Things does a new sketch and I love them. I've used them plenty of times before. I think I have another video that was not affiliated with them sharing how I use the sketch as inspiration. Um, I'll probably do one of those at some point this month as well just because I am involved um, and working with them has been a dream come true and <laughs> I would love to keep that going. Um, so I hope you will be patient and understanding with me for that but also I'm incorporating some older products that have just been in my stash whenever possible um, and some like classics like those stitched rectangle dies everybody needs it doesn't even matter what brand everybody needs one of those in my opinion um so sorry with my mousse I'm going in and coloring him kind of a moussey brown <laughs> um, I kept the coloring here really simple I also tried to zoom in nice and tight for you guys so you could see everything that was happening I really like this angle as well a little bit to the side. If you guys ever have requests or ideas on different ways I could film these things to make them easier for you to see, please let me know. I'm very open to trying something new. Um, I'm going in with all E40s. I'm using the darker E40s on the body, the lighter E40s for the antlers and his little belly. And then I'm going to shade in the like fluffy earmuffs with some cool grays as well as the lid of the cup and a little warm gray W7 for the hooves. Um, I'm going in with these deeper reds, the R59 and R29. These are going to match that cherry cardstock and um, ink that we use to stamp with perfectly. And I did not get the coordinating dies for this set, so I am going to fussy cut my little mousse out. Um, I just kind of took my time. This one's not super complicated. The first time I cut him out, I honestly left like the space between the legs. I just left that there. I went very broadly around the antlers. The second time, I tried to narrow it down a little bit, but I think both look fine in the end design. I don't really have a huge preference. So now that we're assembling, I'm cutting that distance that there was between the bottom of my stitched panel and my sentiment in half. So it was a full inch before I brought it down to a half an inch. And then I'm using my mousse just to kind of help guide my candy cane placement there. I want to make sure that the bottom of the candy cane touches his feet and the top of the candy cane touches the stitching on the edge. So again, I'm just going to hold him in place for that right hand side one. And you can see that one I ended up having to shift just a little bit at the top. It wasn't quite touching the stitching. And then I'm going to trim the second set of um, candy canes down so that they fit right underneath of that. I just think that this kind of spray all the way across the card fills everything out and it looks a lot more finished um, in my opinion and I like still working with odd numbers so with the candy canes and the mousse we have five elements kind of fanned out and I love that and I also just think that having the distance from the top of the stitching panel to the top of the candy canes and then from the bottom of the stitched panel to the sentiment, having that be the same distance 
on either side so that everything is a little more centered just makes this way more visually appealing and I love it. So the first card was good. It was fine. The second card I love. So I hope this encourages you to not get down on yourself. If there's things that you think, man, if I could start over, this is what I would change. You don't have to change anything if you don't want to, but if you're feeling inspired to try something out, I encourage you to test it, try it, make, take another go at it. Nobody's perfect, um, and you might just end up with a card that you love. So thank you so much for hanging out. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button so that we can be crafty friends, and I will see you back here next week. And until then, guys, happy crafting.